Soviet infantry here and the accompanying BMPs want to take the position held by these American infantry and their supporting ITV and tank vehicles. One way they could do it is simply keep shooting until all the Americans are dead. The other way is to launch an assault. How that works is, they move, and remember they can't move within 2 inches 5 centimeters of the enemy, they've got an 8 inch or 20 centimeter move, so they could move past them if they were allowed to move too, uh, closer, but they can't. So they move up until they're there, leaving lanes of fire for the BMPs to shoot between them. The BMPs elect to sit where they are and do some shooting. And then in the shooting step, they shoot as normal. Now, let's assume that due to unfortunate shooting, they do nothing to the Americans. Then, after the shooting step comes the assault step. And in the assault step, they get to move another 4 inches or 10 centimeters into contact with the enemy. That means they're narrowing the assault. Now, if this team, for instance, was more than 4 inches away from the enemy, 10 centimeters away from the enemy, they would not be able to launch an assault, except being infantry, they're allowed to stack 2D. And so if they can make contact with an infantry team that is directly in contact with the enemy, they're also in contact with the enemy and in the assault. On the other hand, if they were here and could only contact this one because it's not directly in contact with the enemy, that would not count. They would not get to move and not be in the assault. There are some restrictions on who can assault. You can't assault if you made a dash move. You can't assault if you made a tactical move of more than 10 inches or 25 centimeters. And you can't assault if you fired using your halted rate of fire. To assault, you have to move forward, so you have to be shooting as if you're moving, even if you didn't move the model in the moving step. There are a couple of other minor restrictions, but they're the main ones. Now, the Soviet infantry have charged into contact with the Americans. The Americans now get defensive fire. That's shooting as the infantry are closing with them. It's done as a normal shooting. It uses their halted rate of fire. And every team within 8 inches or 20 centimeters of the enemy will get to shoot, even if it's not being assaulted. So this infantry team here, which isn't directly being assaulted, will shoot. And these ITVs will as well. Now something to note about missile launchers such as these ITVs and the Dragon here is that they have a minimum range. A lot of anti-tank missiles do. And that minimum range in this case is 20 centimeters. Since the target must be within 20 centimeters to be able to fire at them in defensive fire, and you have a minimum range of 20 centimeters, your missiles will not be able to fire in defensive fire. However, the ITV also has an M60 machine gun mounted on it, and that can fire in defensive fire. So, the defensive fire shooting is as any normal shooting, and the infantry will be the targets. The only possible targets are the teams that actually assaulted and charged into contact. Now, I'm not going to roll the defensive fire at this moment, because in this case, there's going to be so much defensive fire that the infantry probably wouldn't get in. I've put this selection of models here, so I could talk about who can defensive fire, but if I was the Russian player, I would not be making an assault at this point because if they get five hits, they're going to pin me down. If they get five hits, then I am going to fail in my assault and the defensive fire will push me back until I'm outside that minimum distance of two inches. I might get incredibly lucky, especially if I pin down the infantry beforehand and get in. These two extra ITVs here will probably get enough extra fire that I'm not going to make it in. Two possible solutions to that would be to use my BMPs to knock out the vehicles first and, as I said, pin the infantry before assaulting them. Or, I could come in with more infantry. If I have 12 or more infantry teams assaulting, then it will take 8 hits rather than 5 to pin me down and force me back. So, through some very lucky um, die rolling for the Soviets, 
they manage to weather the American defensive fire with no casualties. So what happens next? Well, it's fairly straightforward. We look at the assault number on the attacking troops and they have an assault number of 5 plus. If they roll that, they kill an enemy infantry team. So, 5, dead. 1, failed. And 2, failed. Kill the 1 American infantry team. Now note, there's no saves, no cover, no firepower, no nothing. Succeed in your assault number and the enemy are dead. That's why assaulting is so useful for clearing out a position. It's very bloody. If they were assaulting a vehicle instead, then the vehicle does get to use it, um, its armour for an armour save. The assaulting infantry have two choices. They can use their normal anti-tank rating. In this case, they'll be using their RPG-18s with anti-tank 14 against the side armour of the vehicle, which in this case is 2, an automatic penetration. Or they can use hand grenades with anti-tank 2 against its top armour of 1. In this case, there's no reason they wouldn't use their RPGs to knock out the vehicle, and it too would have been dead. If it was something like an M1 tank, with the excellent side armour against heat weapons like their RPGs, then they'd be in great difficulty knocking it out. So, the Soviet infantry have killed the infantry team. If they wanted, they could advance into its position. The next thing that happens is they decide whether or not, or determine whether or not, they have won. They have won if they could not contact any more enemy teams with a 4 inch 10 centimeter move. Now clearly they can, they can hit this one, this one or this one with this team. So, and of course this one's already in contact. So there's still more enemy about and they have not yet won. In that case, since the assault is not over, the Americans get a chance to counterattack. Looking at their mech platoon, it has a counterattack number of 4+. Plus. The ITVs aren't assault troops, and they have a counterattack number of 5+. Plus. So the American player rolls a dice and rolls a 6. Because that's high enough, both units could counterattack. If they would rolled, say, a 4, then only the infantry could counterattack and the ITVs would not. And if they would rolled a 1 or a 2 or a 3, then the infantry would not counterattack either. However, since they rolled high, the infantry move into the assault just like the Soviet infantry did. The ITVs, the player determines, are far too valuable for this, and they fall back until they are 4 inches or 10 centimetres away from the enemy. So note they have the choice of going in and continuing the assault, or falling back and clearly becoming out of the assault. So, the Americans have two teams in contact. There is no defensive fire for a counterattack like this, so it goes straight to rolling to hit. Their assault number is 4+, plus, so it'll hit on a 4+. Plus. 6, that one hits, killing a team immediately. And 4, this one also hits, killing a team immediately. Fairly bloody. As I said, assaults are a great way of clearing out a position or losing a lot of troops if you fail. Now, the Americans haven't won because there are still Soviet troops close enough to fight. So now we go to the Soviets and they have a 3 plus counterattack number. So we roll for a counterattack for them and they go back in. Now they could voluntarily break off but at this point the Soviet player is still determined to win this fight. Then rolls on his assault number of 5 plus, scores a 5, kills an American team. They still have not won because there are still enemy infantry or tanks within 4 inches or 10 centimetres. So it's the Americans turn to attempt to counterattack. They roll a 3, their counterattack number is 4 plus, so they must break off. They cannot counterattack. To do so, they move the shortest distance they can to get at least 4 inches, 10 centimetres away from the enemy. The Soviet infantry can then consolidate that allows them to move 4 inches or 10 centimetres in any direction. However, they may not come within 2 inches of the enemy. So they decide to move across here into the woods as their consolidation movement. At the end of the assault step, just as in the shooting step, units that have taken casualties and are not in good spirits need to take a unit morale check. Now, the American infantry and the Soviet infantry 
Both have less than three stands, three being the minimum for infantry to be in good spirits. Remember, tanks and aircraft need two, infantry need three to be in good spirits. So both of them are going to take a unit morale check. For the Soviets, their morale number is three plus. They're very determined. They roll a four. Despite having mass taking massive casualties, they've cleared the position to their satisfaction. The Americans have a morale number of four plus. They're very good at fighting, but not quite so willing to take extended casualties as the Soviets. They roll a two. The infantry surviving the assault decide that the battle is going against them and depart the table. A success for the Soviet assault.